Hello friends, welcome to this 14th lecture on complex analysis. Till now, we, what we have done, we have a concept of function from C to C, right? And where we want to reach, this is our aim, we want to uh, know how to differentiate and integrate functions from complex plane to complex plane, right? So, we are moving towards that direction. So, basically, whenever you have a function and you want to reach at this differentiation and integration of that function, then you have to define these two things which are limits and continuity so in this video we will try to do what is we will try to learn what is uh, what is the meaning of uh, limits in case of functions from complex plane to complex plane so let us do that so obviously uh, for defining the concept of limit of a function we need the concept of distance between two complex numbers okay if we want to define the concept of limits of functions from c to c then we must have a concept of distance between two points in this set and the points in this set are complex numbers so we need to know what is the dis uh, what is the meaning of distance between two complex numbers so actually uh, unknowingly we already have done that thing we already have a concept of distance between two complex numbers let us see how uh, we have seen that complex numbers can be represented by points in the plane so basically if you have a complex number x1 plus ieta y1 you can actually represent this point this complex number as the point x1 comma y1 in the complex plane that is xy plane and if you have a complex number x1 plus ieta y2 then you can represent it as x2 comma y2 in the xy plane right now you have these two points x2 comma y2 and x1 comma y1 and you already know how to define the distance between two points in xy plane that is this thing so you define the distance between two points which is this distance this straight line if you join the uh, points with the straight line we call it the distance between these two points so that that distance is actually equal to it comes from pythagoras theorem it is equal to x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square square root so we have uh, this thing that if the point x1 plus ieta y1 is represented with the if the uh, number x1 plus ieta y1 is represented with the point x1 y1 and the number x2 plus ieta y2 is represented with the point x2 y2 then we have a concept of distance between two these two points okay and we will use the same concept uh, to define the distance between two complex numbers right so basically if you have this complex number z1 okay and this complex number z2 you have this complex number z1 and you have a complex number z2 so you define the distance between these two numbers as this thing okay so basically this can also be written as this can also be written as follows so basically what you do you take the difference between z1 and, my, and z2 you already know how to do this you have to subtract the real parts and the imaginary parts separately so you'll get x1 minus x2 plus ieta y1 minus y2 and then we have defined something called modulus so if you have a number z that is x plus ieta y we have defined it as uh, modulus of x plus ieta y as x square plus y square right so now you do this thing modulus of z1 minus z2 will be x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square which is nothing but the same quantity so we have reached at this point that if you have a number z1 and if you have a number z2 and you want to define the distance between these two numbers complex numbers so what you will do you will compute this z1 minus z2 modulus this thing will give you the distance between the two complex numbers x z1 and z2 okay now we have the concept of complex numbers let us try to define the complex of limits i'm sorry okay so what is the situation we have right now we have a function from c to c okay and we know the concept of distance between two points here right we want to define the limit of the function okay so let us recall what we do when we have a function from r to r okay so suppose you have a function from r to r so basically you define you draw its graph like this this is your real axis x axis this is your y axis so you define something like this right suppose this is the point x is equal to a and you want to write what is this you want to know what is the meaning of limit fx extending to a is l it means that whenever you are approaching near a whenever you are near a okay whenever your x is near a your fx will be near l okay so whenever the value of 
x is near a the value of x fx is near l okay this is the meaning of the limit it means that as you are approaching a okay the value of the function is approaching l this is the meaning of the limit of the function right and mathematically you can write it or or more generally you can say that whenever you are in a neighborhood of a you can always find a neighborhood of l such that for the that particular neighborhood of a the values assumed by function lying are lying in that neighborhood of l okay so for every neighborhood of a you can find a neighborhood of l such that your function assumes the values for the neighborhood of a which you have chosen in the neighborhood of l which you have found okay so and in this case when you have you are having function from r to r these neighborhoods are nothing but intervals so if, if you are in r neighborhood of a means x minus a less than epsilon okay it means a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon which is an interval so when you are in r function uh, you are dealing with functions from r to r your neighborhoods are intervals okay mathematically the definition of limit is given any epsilon greater than 0 okay you can always find a delta greater than 0 such that your fx is in epsilon neighborhood of l whenever your x is in delta neighborhood of a okay and f of a is exempted when you are dealing with limits then you don't have to consider f of a your function may not be defined at x is equal to a for example you have this function x square minus 9 upon x minus 3 limit x tending to 3 this function is not defined at 3 okay but the limit of the function at x is equal to 3 is actually 6 okay so you have to exempt this uh, this point a you when you are dealing with limits and you are computing the limit at the point a then you have to delete that point a from the neighborhood of a so basically you are dealing with a minus a a minus epsilon to a plus sorry here is delta a minus delta to a plus delta except a okay a may be included or may not be included but it is not necessary right okay so similarly here also uh, you will define the concept of limit likewise so basically you have a function from c to c right and you want to see what is the meaning of limit z tending to z naught f of z is w naught it means that whenever you are near z naught okay your value of the function is near w naught okay and in that case when we were dealing with functions from r to r our neighborhoods were intervals here a neighborhood of z naught means a circle okay it can be square neighborhood also but we are dealing with we will be dealing with circular neighborhoods so whenever you are in a neighborhood of z naught your function should be in a neighborhood of w naught okay this is the meaning of the limit in case of functions from c to c this concept is similar similarly defined as in uh, case of functions from r to r okay so formally what is the definition it means that whenever epsilon for, a, for any given epsilon greater than 0 you can always find a delta greater than 0 such that whenever z is in the neighborhood of delta neighborhood of z naught okay you have to exempt z naught as in this case your function fz should be in epsilon neighborhood of w naught okay so let us uh, try to understand it more clearly so basically it means that geometrically what is me, uh, the meaning of the limit geometrically the above formal definition says that any neighborhood of w naught okay any neighborhood of w naught okay it means that this is equivalent to the, uh, the line that given any epsilon greater than 0 okay it means that for any neighborhood of w naught any neighborhood of w naught contains all the values assumed by f in some full neighborhood of z naught okay this is equivalent to the line that there exists some delta greater than 0 except possibly the value of z, f of z naught. So you have to exempt z naught as I already told. So it means that whenever you are given an epsilon, okay, you, here is your w naught and you are given an epsilon, you have to see, you have to find out a delta, okay, such that for all z in this neighborhood of of z naught delta neighborhood of z naught your function values 
okay should lie between lie in this neighborhood epsilon neighborhood of w naught so this is the meaning of the limit of the functions from complex plane to complex plane let us look at one example so we have to show that limit z tending to i iota z square is minus 1 so basically what you have to do you you have to assume that any epsilon greater than 0 is given okay so let us assume that we are given any epsilon greater than 0 and you have to find a delta such that for all 0 less than z minus z naught is iota here z naught is iota here we should have f of z minus what is your l here what is the limit value minus 1 minus 1 should be less than epsilon and this delta you have to find out in terms of epsilon right so let us try to do that so we will look at f of z naught minus w naught this is your limit so this is nothing but f of z z is z square minus minus 1 so it will be z square plus 1 now the concept is that you have to try to uh, uh, like make the things like z minus eta. So I'll just factorize it. So I'll write it as z plus eta times z minus eta. So modulus of a, b is same as modulus of a into modulus of b. So I can write it as modulus of z plus eta into modulus of z minus eta. Again I want to make things like z. Okay this is uh, let us. Uh, this is this is something I have done wrong here. I'm, I want to make things like z minus eta. So I'll keep it as such and I'll just okay modify this thing. I'll write it as z minus eta plus 2 eta into z minus eta. Okay. So here it should be z minus eta. It should be z minus eta plus 2 eta. So this is now I'll use a triangular inequality here. So you have z minus eta plus 2 eta. This is your number A, this is your number B, this is less than is equal to modulus of Z minus eta plus modulus of 2 eta. So this is equal to, this is less than equal to, this is Z minus eta as such and here you will write Z minus eta modulus of Z minus eta plus modulus of minus 2 eta. Now you assume that your Z minus eta, you assume that modulus of Z minus eta is less than delta, then this thing is delta and this thing is delta and this thing is 2 modulus of minus 2 eta is 2 so less than delta into delta plus 2 and we want it to be now you have to choose delta in terms of epsilon we if we choose delta less than epsilon by 3 and delta less than 1 then we will get here delta less than epsilon by 3 okay and delta less than 1 so it will be 1 plus 2 so we will get it as epsilon so it means that whenever you are given an epsilon greater than 0 you can you can choose a delta okay whenever you are given an epsilon greater than 0 you can choose a delta such that delta is minimum of epsilon by 3 and 1 okay then for this particular value of delta your f of z minus w naught will be less than epsilon whenever your z plus z minus eta is greater than 0 and less than delta it means that and this this choice is always possible it means that whenever you are given any epsilon you can always find a delta which is minimum of epsilon by 3 and 1 such that for this particular of delta 0 less than z minus eta less than delta implies f of z minus minus 1 less than epsilon okay this is the definition of limit it means that whenever you are in a neighborhood of eta the function assumes value in the neighborhood of minus 1 it means that limit of z square as z tends to eta is actually minus 1 okay so this is how we prove that the limit of the function from c to c exists okay thank you